I had a painful realization that my life was not following the path of a role model. At just 27 years old, overwhelmed by financial problems, I found myself immersed in the drug-shadowed world by forcing myself to become a transporter for a well-known American motorcycle gang, a reality I prefer not to disclose, I embarked on a twisted journey. Over the years, with my involvement deepening, I gained respect and rose to become one of the most authoritative members of that circle. However, this success was accompanied by questionable decisions and morally wrong behaviors. I found myself involved in episodes of violence, threatened defenseless people, and committed harmful actions such as car arson and animal poisoning. My experience, though painful to acknowledge, vividly represents the dark and murky consequences of being part of an American motorcycle gang. By 2017, I had already turned 69, and due to health problems arising from alcohol and drug excesses, my participation in outings with my motorcycle group was becoming increasingly limited. I recognized that the passing years, marked by a life of excess and recklessness, were inexorably diminishing my ability to fully enjoy those activities. It was evident that aging brings inevitable changes, and I had to face this reality. Towards the end of September that same year, I was hospitalized in a hospital in Northern California for pancreatitis treatment. I lay alone in an empty hospital room, wondering if this was how the end of my story would come alone, among strangers, with no one on the other end of the phone. Obviously, none of my family members cared about me anymore. My past life didn't allow me to maintain close ties with relatives or family members as the risk of involving them in the consequences of my actions was too great. This situation led me to avoid creating another family outside of my motorcycle gang. I preferred to maintain a connection with those who shared my lifestyle and choices because they better understood the reality I lived in. But that day in that hospital room, I felt completely alone. After the diagnosis and the stern warning from the emergency room doctor, I was already in the grip of pain surpassing anything I had ever experienced in my life. So burdened by unbearable suffering already afflicting me, I was urgently hospitalized for medical treatment. What happened in the last hours of that September night would shatter my reality forever. I knew deep in my heart that I was dying and that I was called to pay the debt all men must pay. But I wasn't even remotely ready. For hours and hours I lay there, enduring excruciating pain like I never believed possible. My pancreas was dissolving. They were literally eating me from the inside, and just when I thought I couldn't bear it anymore, I felt some sort of internal change happening in my body. I closed my eyes and shuddered. It surprised me, and when I opened my eyes I realized I couldn't see. There was a dark blot covering my sight, so I began peeling away what felt hardened, removing the wax from my left eye. It felt like peeling off a layer of onion. It seemed like everything cleared up, but my vision was completely blurry, and I began to hear footsteps scrambling around me. Trying to stay calm, I quickly ripped off the layers from my right eye, all the while wondering what was happening in the world but my stomach was bursting with butterflies, telling me something was terribly wrong. Anticipating the unknown, I was paralyzed with fear as my vision began to clear, and what surrounded me came into focus. I found myself on the outskirts of a sea of people running back and forth like wild savages, striking each other with a variety of different weapons. You call it, they had it. Everyone had white eyes right up to the pupils. Haunting eyes I will never forget. Soulless. They had all the features of a human being, but something was missing. 
As I entered this dark realm, I had about a minute to orient myself and try to understand what was happening to me. Stimulating questions quickly poured out of my mind, questions I didn't say aloud but still received answers. Random people among the crowd screamed responses in the distance as if they could read my mind. The first question, of course, is, what is this place? Hell, where do you think you are, came from a man in the distance on some sort of balcony. In total shock and disbelief, I thought to myself, this must be a dream. This can't be real. Echoes of laughter came from afar. Maybe I didn't want the answers, but I couldn't help but wonder what was happening. Not me, was another thought crossing my mind as I realized the gravity of the situation was beginning to weigh on my shoulders. Where do you think they send the damn angry drunks when they die, idiot? Came from a man standing on the ground about ten feet in front of me. His words were condescending, but his tone was resolute. I was frozen, the purest and most unsettling form of shock I had ever experienced. At that moment, I realized that no one was speaking verbally, but they were speaking to me inside my head. I trembled as I tried to distance myself from the ensuing chaos, as if to say, I'm not a part of this, but I found there was nowhere to go. There was a barrier of darkness as black as pitch, darker and denser than the surrounding midnight sky in this barren landscape of God. As I approached the darkness, I felt my body being repelled by it as if like poles of two magnets meeting for the first time. It was impossible. I was stuck. You know the feeling you get when you're caught doing something you know is wrong? Well, imagine that same feeling multiplied exponentially by the fact that I was reaping what I had sown for an entire lifetime. Fuck me is a massive understatement compared to the raw emotion creeping up my soul's spine. I found myself in the toughest surroundings and I was bare, empty, scared, and exposed. There are no words that can encapsulate the most terrible sensation I have ever felt with a single thought. It's over. Oh, even now I feel like vomiting. Not only will I never see my loved ones again, but the God I have loved all my life doesn't want me. My lifelong belief that I was unworthy was now verified, and just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. The interrogation was over. Now it was time to play for me and my new friends. In the blink of an eye, every piercing white eye turned to me, and menacingly the unruly crowd began to swarm towards me, I knew it was happening and I wasn't ready for this. For anything, they began the assault with random objects, shoes, shirts, and such, whipping me with what felt like the sting of a wet towel as I pleaded with them. Not me, please, not me, I don't deserve this. Their sly smiles and mocking laughter only heightened the terror. For them, it was like it was just a game and this was just the beginning, and they were just getting warmed up. I was surrounded by as many people as could possibly surround you at once, and as far as the eye could see. I ducked and dodged as I ran through the crowd, but the more I ran, the worse things got. It was like a video game. As you move from the first level to the second, the game gets harder and harder. And here, wherever this is, things go from bad to worse with each step. Shoes and shirts turned into sticks and bats. Sticks and bats turned into clubs and pipes. The level of pain obviously increased, but it didn't come close to the pain you would feel being hit by a bat or pipe on earth. I suppose for this infernal game to continue, it had to be this way. The only thing I could do was gather whatever I could find and start fighting back. The speed at which everyone could move was unheard of. They ran like track stars, struck like boxers, and wielded weapons like warriors. Things moved at such a fast pace. 
and from what I could see, many people loved what they were doing. There was pure pleasure in the violence. What could I do but try to defend myself and react? But there were so many of them, and I was the freshest meat on the market, and the vultures were picking every bit of my carcass off. It was relentless. Birds of a feather truly flocked together in the afterlife. If I hadn't met this child, Angel, who could only have been three or four years old, I know I wouldn't be here writing this right now. In the midst of chaos, and I was right in the thick of it, a calm and soft voice caught my attention. Hey, that's all she said, and that was enough to stop me dead in my tracks. What really intrigued me when I looked at her face was that she was the only one among the millions of them who had a beautiful blue eye and a pure white eye like the others, as if she could see in both worlds. Behind her was a giant man about 12 feet tall whom she called the king. He didn't pay any attention to me at all. The attack seemed to stop as I listened to this child say, I know who you are. Perplexed, what, I thought. You're the boss of a bad gang. How do you know that, I asked her, bearing in mind that all communication was transferred from mind to mind. Her calmness comforted me for that brief moment. She said, you haven't been here for long. You can still go back. A feeling I had already lost and probably had slowly forgotten returned. Hope, how was my only question. She said, you have to feel it. Feel like you're back where you were before you got here, since I was still wearing what looked like the outline of my hospital gown and still suffering in the pancreas area. I knew exactly where I was from. Go, she said emphatically, as if time was about to expire. Those were her last words to me, and my brief moment of comfort turned back into chaos as bats and pipes began to rain down on me again. I pushed shoved and ran as fast as I could, punching my way through the crowd, craving for the darkness I could see in not so far distance. Nothing and no one would stop me, no matter how hard they tried. And believe me, they were giving it their all. I began to feel the repelling force of the darkness pushing me back as I approached the border. It became so strong that I fell to my knees, struggling against a force I couldn't see, pushing and crawling further and further away as I was pulled back by what felt like a hundred hands scratching and clawing at every inch of my body. Feeling complete exhaustion began to calm me. I made one last plunge into the darkness. I closed my eyes and with every fiber of my being, I imagined and tried to feel myself back on the hospital bed. I opened my eyes to complete darkness. It didn't work. It didn't work. Laughter and screams pierced my heart. I hurried back, perhaps only a few inches, into a darkness force that I had never felt before and landed on my back, trying to recreate myself and return to that hospital bed. Maybe ten seconds had passed before I had the courage to open them to see if I had done it. I had gone back, and to my total shock and undeniable amazement, I found myself looking through the hospital sheet. My heart literally felt like it skipped a beat, and I sat breathless and screaming. Nurses and doctors came running, and I jumped out of bed, te tearing the IV out as I fell into the medical machines. I tried to explain what had just happened to the doctors, but I could tell it was just falling on deaf ears. Over the next two weeks, the nurses enjoyed listening to my experience and gave me as much comfort as they could. The voice of the child still echoes in my head as I imagine being back in that awful place again. Sometimes I wonder if after everything I've done in life, it's fair for me to endure that pain for eternity but that little angel knew my name. I wonder why. Is it already written? I guess only time will give me that answer. Reflecting on those lost souls with their haunting white eyes, I feel nothing but sadness. 
after this profound experience, I made the decision to radically change the course of my life. I wish to spend the remaining years of my old age in peace, dedicating myself exclusively to doing good. I am aware that it will be a difficult journey, an attempt to alleviate the pain I have inflicted and the suffering I have caused to the people I have encountered along my path. However, this experience has opened my eyes to the future and has truly frightened me. Therefore, I have left the gang with which I have spent much of my life. I must admit that this decision has brought about quite a few problems, but I am firmly convinced of its righteousness. Now I seek to help people in need and have joined a Christian group. I am available to share my experience in detail with those who are interested, as I have found that there are groups and individuals who believe in redemption and are interested in hearing my story. I am aware that all this will never be enough to fully repair the harm I have caused, and if I have to face eternity in suffering, I will because it is right to pay for one's mistakes. However, if there is even the slightest hope of following the angel I saw during my experience, I will do everything possible to become a better person. I hope this video can help someone, and if you liked it, I ask you to share it with those who may find inspiration, especially those facing difficult situations or involved in unhealthy environments. My transformation is so significant, and I hope it can be a guide for others. Thank you for sticking with me this far. I am sure this testimony has left you as shocked as it did me, so I ask you to comment with an Amen so I'll know you appreciated it. See you in the next video. God bless you.